Welcome to God Encounters. We're so glad that you've joined us today. Today my guest is Roger Lanier, and Roger has a ministry called Flag of Hope. Now, um, I got to know you a little bit when we worked on my music video down at Cannon Beach. Started in Israel, and then you came and joined with mm -hmm. a group from Bethesda, right. um, which I really appreciated you being there and what you mm -hmm. contributed. It was a lot of fun. He worked you really too. hard all day long, mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> but it was good. It was so, good. Yeah, but you have quite a story. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like you to share that story today. So for those of you that may not know Roger very well, um, he has quite a background. He had to overcome a lot of things. So yeah, go ahead and share with us, Roger. Yeah, so, so my family and I, we had lived in Alaska. Um, and so my my dad, when I was four, he he had um, he he had did some things that were unlawful, and and he had went to prison. Mm. My mom had became um, suicidally depressed, mm. and uh, I and my two brothers we we basically had lost the home that we were living in, mm. and then um, we we had to become uh, wards of the state, so to speak. Mm. But my first recollection of God's protection over me was when, when I was in the 1964 uh, Anchorage, Alaska earthquake, mm. which was 9.7, I believe, on the Richter scale. Wow. And so I know I was with my mom. I was in her arms, shielded, but, and there was a plate glass window about three feet from us. Mm. And she was against, she literally had her back against the wall. The plate glass window had shattered and then it cut her, but it protected me. Wow. So that was God's first, his, his providence over mm -hmm. for me. Mm -hmm. And, um, you were how old at that time? I was one. <laughs> one year old. Wow. <laughs> I was one year old. Okay. And so, so, so I, I have two brothers, um, David was one of them. He was five years older than me. And then Philip is seven years older than mm -hmm. me. So then we became wards of the state. And so we went into the foster care system. Mm. But prior to that, um, my mom endured um, 20 to 30 years of shock treatment. It was, it, it was, it was, it was bad yeah wow and and so so my dad was in jail or prison and so so i felt like god had had left me mm. so i went i and my brother dave went into one foster care mm. place and then my brother phil went into another home mm. and so um there so was now a the lot only of family abuse. you know you're mm -hmm. kind of it's breaking down even more that right. had to be rough it was rough, but you know, God is good. Mm -hmm. He He's good, and I don't just say that as a cliche. Yeah. He 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 really is good, Cheryl, and yeah. and He 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 protected me, and my brother Dave was my protector. But when he had passed away when he was twenty, mm. died in an auto accident. Oh my God! And that, that shattered my my world. It changed my world. Yeah. The family that I grew up in, they also had four children of their own, but I never really felt like I was wanted. So, mm, that's hard. So, so you know that's we. It's okay, but you know after my my brother David died. The next year, a, a friend came into my life. His name is Kevin Adkins, and he shared Christ with me. Mm. And um, he he just asked me if I'd like to receive Christ, and I I said I would love to. I don't know what that means, but 
I did. Mm -hmm. And then he gave me my first Bible, mm. Gerald, and he said that uh, out of all the books of the Bible, you remind me, the book that you remind me of is the book of Job. Wow. <laughs> and jo Joseph is my favorite biblical character. Oh, wow. Okay. He's always been my favorite biblical yeah. character. So. Okay. So, I mean, that's that's a little bit of my background. And, uh, yeah, wow. Now, you married mm -hmm. down the road to I did. the love of your life. I did. Margie? Margie, Margie, Margie Lanier. Okay. Margie Lynn, she, she was... That she was previously married, and um, and her husband had passed away. Mm. I came into the picture, mm -hmm. but the thing about that is that she had a little son, and his name was Isaiah, mm. and I became his. I kind of fell in love with him, and mm -hmm. I was his first grade Sunday school teacher. Oh, okay. I taught him how to play marbles when when he was a little little guy, yeah. and, and it was just fun. Cause yeah. see the family of origin I grew up in, I wasn't adopted. So when I got a chance to adopt him, oh, wow. and so I did mm -hmm. uh, six months after I married That's great. the love of my life. Yeah. And, um, but we, we, we met though at church and we were both singers. Mm -hmm. I'm a tenor okay. baritone and she's a second okay. soprano. <laughs> and so the one night I asked her, I said, you know, I, I was shy, but I asked her, I said, could I walk you and Isaiah home? And she said, she said, well, I'd like that. Oh. And so I walked her home, mm -hmm. got to her, um, to her apartment. And, um, and, and I just said, well, maybe sometime can we sing together? Mm -hmm. And, and I was thinking like a group, mm -hmm. but she was thinking like just the two of us. <laughs> you know, I got, I got real red. I know I did. And I just said, well, well, I just, I just mean, you know, as a group, you know. Yeah, yeah. So I bought her, we had our first date, and our first date, Cheryl, was I bought my wife a, a glass of, of water for five cents. <laughs> that was our first date. So. You big spender, you. Yeah, I was a big spender, yeah. Yeah. That's cute. But it was fun. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. Now you've been married how many years? 21 years. 21 years. Okay. June 28th next year will be 22. Wow. Okay. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And how many children? I have one, but he was, I adopted Isaiah. Mm -hmm. And he was my wife, Margie's. And then, um, yeah, so I, I adopted him six months afterward. And we haven't had any additional children. Okay. However, we've had spiritual children. Yes. And we continue to have those. Which is beautiful. You open your home to, yes. you've got some young boys living yes. there. We so need fathers today, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. fathers and mothers, which is just huge on your part. And right. that, you know, you know. I do. You know firsthand what it's like to not have a father in the home and, and the heartbreak of all that and the breakdown of the family. So yes. that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Prior, prior to getting married, I went into the Navy. I okay. should back up at okay. 21. Okay. I graduated late in life because I, I, was, I had failed and was kept back one year. So first and third grades. Understandable with what you went through. Yeah. R right. And yeah. so, so, so I, I spent four years in the Navy and I got an honorable discharge mm -hmm. and uh, I was baptized in the Philippine Sea. Oh yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Not everybody can say that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, so I, I, I had some problems as far as with alcohol and some other things and, mm -hmm. and my spiritual parents, they basically came up to me and said, would you like an alternative to the lifestyle you're living? Mm. And I said, I'd love that. Mm -hmm. what, what do you have in mind? Mm -hmm. Well, they were influential, me coming out to the Northwest. Oh. So I went to Bible college. Okay. And uh, I guess I'm getting a little ahead of myself. But You're fine. Yeah. I, I went to Bible college for six years. Okay. And they gave me a reference. And they had both come to the same one, which was Multnomah University. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's, um, I, and I, I worked grounds on campus. So, mm. but one of the, one of the interesting things about my time at, at Multnomah was that, Cheryl, I, I had every grant you could think of. Mm. <laughs> I didn't have any money. I had some money from the military, yes. Mm -hmm. But 
I would go to my box, my mailbox, which is box 506, and there would be cash in there made out. It, w it would be an envelope and it would say Roger Lanier. There would be no return name wow. on there. And wow. it happened for five years. Wow. So you're talking thousands of dollars. Wow. I would normally call it thousands. It cost me 10000 for six years. Wow. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Nice. So, so where did mm -hmm. your wife come in the picture here? Were you married before Bible college, after Bible college? After Bible after. college. Okay. She came in the picture when it, it was when I was, I was the first, uh, Isaiah's first grade Sunday school teacher. And, and she had, um, she said, well, she, she had to do a background check on this guy, <laughs> me. And so she talked to her girlfriends yeah. and said, well, can you dig up any dirt on this guy? <laughs> and, and, and my one, one of my roommates, he's actually a professor at, at Multnomah, he said, now I'm, I'm quoting him, he said, this is a, a man in whom there is no guile. Wow. So when my wife heard that, she's like, okay. Yeah, this, this guy's, guy's safe. okay. okay. <laughs> He's safe, yeah. Right. <laughs> He's safe. Yeah. And so um, um, please refresh my memory what the question was again. So, um, okay, so you married a woman that had right. a son. Right. Now, I know there was some tragedy that yeah. happened down the road with yeah. that son. Yeah. Can you share that? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so, so Isaiah, when, as he was growing older, now, the way I learned how to be a father mm -hmm. and a husband mm -hmm. was by reading books. Okay. I, I didn't have a, okay. a good family yeah. model right. at all. Right. And so I just, I just bought books and read them and tried to understand. Mm -hmm. So, but, but Isaiah was um, uh, very much of a challenge. Mm. It's like having five children as opposed oh, to Oh, wow. One. That's a challenge. Yeah. So okay. not not that I've had that many, but but he so but you know, as he grew older there was some and and it's my wife's story, so I'm not permitted to go into that. I mm -hmm. wanna honor her. Mm -hmm. And so he, he had a drug problem. Mm. And and with that, um he had uh he, heroin was his drug of mm. choice. Wow. And so, and uh, um, I think he he was blaming his himself for um, the loss of his dad, mm. you know. And I think that hurt him so much to where, instead of looking at himself like a son mm -hmm. from from the heavenly Father's perspective, mm -hmm. he looked at himself as a felon. Mm. And so, the thing is, is that there was it was December thirteenth. Or excuse me, December 30th, 2014, that um, he just, he gave up. Mm. And um, it, he just it decided to end his life. And he ended his life as far as in my house. And so, mm. so I had woken up in the morning and, mm. and, and I discovered his body. And That's rough. Yeah, I, I yeah. saw him lying there. Yeah. And so I immediately started CPR because I'm trained, mm -hmm. and uh, um, so I had to break the breastbone. But mm. but the thing is, though, is that when chaplains and and medical examiners, police, fire department, all these people, chair, all the professional people, they said, "Why is it so light in here?" I said, mm. "That's because God cares about you." So when you come in this house, the light of Christ resides in this mm. house. So when you leave, the peace of God goes with mm. you. I said, and and so they were just, they didn't know what to say. They said, 99% of the time, Cheryl, when when there's a tragedy like this, yeah. the person has no one. They, they have no one to look to, look to for right. support. Right, right. But we had hundreds of people. Wow. So getting mm. back to the fact when I saw my son, what well, was his, sh his shell that was lying there? It wasn't right, him. Right, right. My wife was at his feet, mm. and she was in shock, and she said that uh, she, 
she said that there was this it wasn't a substance but it was it was like it was like this happy happiness at her at his feet mm. and so they they say like when the body leaves leaves the earth that it the the feet are the last to leave and i don't really? know if that's wow. i don't know if that's correct or if it's the hearing or whatnot but mm. what i saw in the spirit and this is what really got me i saw I saw my son, he's putting his arms up like this to his father in heaven, to his mm. heavenly father. <laughs> and I saw the father stretching his, his hands down here mm. towards his son. Mm. And so that really got me. Wow. And that is the, the, the picture I choose to take right. into eternity. Yeah. And, and I have all these people that stay in my home mm -hmm. and they, and they, they, one, I'm a, I'm a, a leader, le one on the leadership team at Bethesda Church, mm -hmm. and so another leader came over with his wife, and they said, "This room, this particular spot, is a portal." Mm. And so after three years, that's what we've, we've had. We've we just people have encounters in that wow. room. Wow, wow. So yeah. Amazing. Well, it's always good to know that you know. When you lose somebody, that mm -hmm. you know you'll see them again in heaven one day. Right. You know, we don't always understand the circumstances that we have to go through on this earth. Right. But, you know, we know that if we've given our hearts to Christ, you know, mm -hmm. we know that we'll, we'll be in heaven again one day together. Right. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Wow. And well, he did give his life to Christ. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. So um, what's another God encounter you can share with us? Yeah. So another one. Is, is the fact that I was at a prophetic conference, my first prophetic conference three years ago. I get excited about this one. Mm -hmm. And so my son actually showed up. It was a vision. Now, mm. I, I could see my son. My eyes were closed, mm -hmm. so I, but I could still see him. Mm -hmm. And next to him was Jesus, and he had his arm around Jesus, and there was an angel behind the two of them. Mm. My son looked right at me, Cheryl, and... and and he pointed at me and he said, Dad, he said, when you look in the mirror, I see the Father. Wow. And, and he said, he, and he said this that was so significant. He said that, he said that you and mom are going to have so many encounters in your home because you're going to, you're going to wow. be spiritual mom and dads because yeah. you're going to have all these people in your home, mm. these young men, mm. you know, and, and young women, mm -hmm. mainly it's been young men, mm -hmm. um, and and they're they're just they're going to be changed. Mm. They're they're going to be changed. So then after that, I, I fell to my knees, and, um, and and I just I just wept. And then the vision left. You know, yeah. it went away. Yeah. The music, everything came back. Beautiful. But um, yeah. So that's one encounter. Yeah. Beautiful. And I know that we have in common. We've talked about this before. That you know, we lost. Uh, my husband's mm. son at the age of 19 to a drowning and that was really difficult your, too but yeah. god showed me a, a mm -hmm. picture of him too and i yeah. know he's in heaven yeah so they say unless a seed falls to the ground right and mm -hmm. we know the multiplication happens so you know we have a hope yes we have a hope amen and that's that's what we hold on to and yes. we know and you know it's just a it's a peace that comes yeah. over you and that's one thing yeah. I want to say about you, Roger, is you carry yeah. such a calm, there's such a calm presence about you. And, uh, I mean, seriously, Thank you. you know, like I said, I was <laughs> running around that day at the beach, like frantic, yeah. going, ah, you know, yeah. and you're just like, you just turned to me and you gave me a compliment, but it wasn't just the compliment. It was just like, just instantly this peace and you know, came over me. You carry Yay. a calm Yay. that not everybody carries, yeah. <laughs> and it's beautiful. Thank you. So Thank you know, you. I know it's God. It's totally yeah. God. It's the presence, mm -hmm. of, you know, of God that that does that with you. Most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now you had something exciting happen, I think, last year with your wife. Was it last year? Yeah, it was just several months ago. Okay, actually. this year. It, it was. Yeah, it was wow. this year. Wow. Okay. Okay. It was this year. So share that. With yeah. Us. So my wife, she had a doctor diagnosis of a melanoma. I don't say, I don't say cancer. Mm -hmm. I say doctor diagnosis of melanoma. Okay. 
And so she had the surgery. Mm -hmm. And up until that time, I, I was worried, am I going to lose my wife? Right. And we we're just going down that road. Mm -hmm. While my wife was in surgery, Cheryl, mm -hmm. I never told you this. Mm. While she was in surgery, the Lord gave me a picture. Mm. And that picture was of Lazarus. Mm. He came out of the grave. Right. Jesus said, go ahead, remove the grave clothes. Wow. So where that how that correlates is the fact that my you know, he didn't say, well, I'm good, except I, I got this melanoma thing right here. And that kind of took me out of my, you know, I kind of, not a stupor, but it basically, it, it, it brought my faith back mm -hmm. and it helped me to have perspective again. Mm -hmm. Like when Jesus said, Peter, just come on out come on out on that water yeah. and he walked on the water right. the other disciples did not right however he did yeah and so so we went to so my wife and I so she had the surgery and uh, and she had um, we we went to the the uh, the the cancer cancer people I'm, I'm not sure what the name of it at any rate though oncology Okay. And the gal said, this is going to be an easy conversation. Hmm. And she looked at both of us and she just said, the, this melanoma is less than 1% chance of coming back. Praise God. And that's awesome. It was, it was done. Yeah. It was done. Wow. And it still hasn't come back. Great. And I know that you prayed a lot too. And did. Stuff and had, we she, both sure did. Yeah. yeah. We both did. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, that's definitely a good report. Mm -hmm. So I want to show, for people that don't know what flagging is, um, it's using flags and banners in worship. And that is one of the things that um, Roger does mm -hmm. very well. And he's very passionate about it. And, and it changes atmosphere. So sometimes he'll even go to a park or whatever and just um, pull out the flags. But something I really appreciate, and I would like to show a clip at the end of this, if we are able to, is I watched one, he has a YouTube channel, and I watched one of you at the end, and you were at the beach, and you come against addiction things, because you had to come over those things yourself. Mm -hmm. And I always I say, there's power in your, yes. because that that's come against you becomes power in your hand. You've overcome something, and you mm -hmm. now have authority in that area. Absolutely. So you literally were... Um, you know, stating in that video, if you're struggling with addictions mm -hmm. and things of that nature, you don't have to anymore. That's and right. you, you like basically dance on that, mm -hmm. you wipe it out. Would you like to hear another God counter? Yeah, love okay. it. Okay. So, so here it is. 13 years ago, Thanksgiving, I had, um, I was having, my work schedule was so, very hectic. I got six hours of sleep for Three, three years, basically. Wow. Six hours of sleep a night. I was using anti-anxiety pills to mm. just to rest. Mm. And and I was also on anti antidepressants too. Okay. And I was drinking alcohol too. Mm. And I had mixed a concoction that I just, you know, I just thought I would just give up. Give up on life. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when I had went to the emergency room, I had never woken up, but my, my wife told me that, she said that we were praying over you. You're in a medically induced coma mm. for four days. Mm. Wow. Four days. And um, it just, it, it showed me on how much people loved me. Mm. And when I went to the doctor, I, I saw the doctor before I went into the psych ward. Mm -hmm. And he said, I said, what are the chances of me living through this. He said, you shouldn't be alive right now. <laughs> so, Thank God. so, so I right. can identify. Wow. Yeah. That's the I miraculous hand of God. It's miraculous. Wow. It's and that you would even come out of that. And... and it took my wife three years to forgive me, but she forgave me yeah. for wanting to end my life. Wow. Yeah. You did a lot of drugs when you were younger too, right? Well, I did. I did some speed. I did some marijuana yeah. a little bit. You know, mainly I just drank because oh, I was in okay. pain. I was just in pain. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Yeah. But who takes away that pain? 
Only Jesus. <laughs> only, only Him. Right. Yeah. Only Him. Yeah. Well, can you um, take a look at that camera there sure. and say a prayer over yeah. our audience the way you feel led? Yeah. I just want you to know that whether you grew up in the foster home or not, when I grew up in that, I, I felt like I was alone. And I just want you to know right now that the Lord, He loves you so much. Before the foundation of the world, He saw your eyes and He couldn't wait for them to open. And so He just, He, he gets excited when you open those eyes each day. So I just encourage you, if, if, you're, if you're struggling in this area, thoughts of suicide, any addictions you have in your life, I break them right now in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I seal that, and I, I just seal that with the peace of God. Mm -hmm. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Do not be anxious about anything, young man, young woman. But with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ mm -hmm. Jesus. Mm -hmm. See, this is a, a divine exchange, we call it. Our anxiety for His peace. He, and He just, he, he loves you so much. Mm -hmm. just, just want you to know that. And if, if you ever want to get in contact with some encouraging videos check out flag of hope my youtube channel and the ministry and and you will be blessed so so just go with that just go with that you you are so precious in in his sight and thank you for look listening to this broadcast today i just bless you amen thank you well, thank you for listening to another God Encounters, and we pray you are blessed. As I'm flagging, that I'm, I'm, I'm here fighting for you. So I bless you in the name of Jesus.